Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited, makers of Effluix, the new way to clean up dairy effluent and wastewater while increasing the fertilizer value of your irrigation in one easy step. Visit microbio.co.nz for more. Strong, powerful try. Well, welcome to it, people. A whole hour of rugby league to talk. My name is Martin Devlin. And I'm Tony Kemp. The way it rolls is we segmentise, if there is such a word, the rugby league hour. We're going to look back at the whole round and review, go up the wars. He's alleged today featuring Richie Morgan, the drummer boy in the band. He's the guy that leads the Chance Warriors fans. Came roaring out of your television set from the Olympic Stadium on the weekend. We go head-to-head, debate six separate topics, award the Effluix cleanup player or team of the round, and TK's top five, wrapping it all up. Six quick questions to begin with, though. I asked you this last week. I'm going to repeat the question. Do the Dolphins still deserve to be top of the table right yes. now? They do? <laughs> they do. <laughs> and Melbourne, though, given the fact that they've beaten Penrith, the Warriors, and Brisbane, in fact, the best team in the competition. No. Which Canberra side is real? The one that lost to the injury-plagued Sharks last week, and Ricky Stewart said none of his players deserved any credit, or the mob that thrashed Parramatta so impressively last night? The one that listened to, Richie, uh, to Ricky and thrashed Parra. And Manly legit. They've just beaten Penrith. Are they legit? 100%. Manly are legit? 100%. Bring Nathan Brown. He's the answer. Should the Wars be going to Vegas? Yes. And finally, the NRL is not going to celebrate Michael Jennings and his 300th game for the club. Is that the right thing to do? I'm going to back them. You're going to back the NRL? Yep. The Weekend Roundup. Winners over the weekend. Let's go back to Thursday. Storm beating the Broncos. Just 34-32. Come back from the Broncos. Yeah, they win there. Dogs over the Roosters. We've got a 26-point lead and almost let the Roosters in through the 11 men. Knights versus the Dragons. Come on, the Knights. Rabbitohs getting towered by the Warriors. Too good. Sea Eagles beating the Panthers. The back. Dolphins. Top of the table. Dolphins over the Tigers. Bennett to South. Cowboys over the Titans. The Titans. Mate, that's your team. And the Raiders <laughs> absolutely whacking the eels. Let's get Ricky Stewart on. Top of the table, Dolphins. In the Cowboys, Storm, Sharks, Raiders, Warriors, Eagles and Panthers in that order. Let's go back to Thursday night then. And that Melbourne side, as I said, they have beaten Penrith, they've beaten the Warriors, they've beaten the Brisbane. They've only lost to the Knights. They've won three out of four. How impressive were they on Thursday night? Well, they're impressive by getting the, the win. And Bellam, even Craig Bellamy saying in the post match conference, you know, like, he really can't explain what, what sort of game that was. You know, it would have been exciting to watch. And those were his own words. But for Kimmy Walters to lose that game eight minutes out, two tries ahead of, of Melbourne, Melbourne to get those quick couple of tries and, and stealing a death, um, you'd be disappointed if you're, you're Kevy Walters at the moment, coming off the back of that grand final last year, thinking, here, everyone in, in the world watching rugby leagues think of the Broncos are the team to beat. But, mate, the Storm, you can't... You can't uh, you can't disregard that Storm team under Bellamy. It looks like you... And you said it to me last week, Marty. Are the Storm going to be there again this year? Mate, with with efforts like that, he just continually gets the best effort out of the team. What are we meant to make of Penrith then? Because Manly beat them, and they beat them comfortably on the end in the score, but I want to talk about a couple of those crock decisions. But they actually looked as though... Well, I watched... The, they deserved to win that game. Yeah, they did. Um, but, <laughs> look, when you're... When you're playing those top teams, you you tend to you tend to get out and and put a little bit of extra effort in. And you've got to look at Melbourne's game at the moment. So they've beaten be, beaten the top um, Brisbane and Penrith. So beaten two grand finals. And the Warriors, mate. So that's three out of the top four last year. That's exactly right. And so do you think Bellamy now will sit down as as the season goes on and says, "Here's the benchmark for your season," which he does so well. This is what we're going to build on the back of it. So you know, still if they can get now. Um, Nelson, big Nelson back. There's talk of him leaving. Um, maybe a deal going to St. George and they, take, they, they want a centre. Um, by the by all accounts, that's what's happening. Um, I think that Nelson's still got a big part to play in the storm. As far as Penrith goes, look, can we just uh, just deal straight away with that bunker decision? Um, the try to a cola. Um, to like it, yeah. well, he runs 90 metres. Uh, what was the most obvious knock on? How can the referee and how can the bunker both miss those? Well, because... They should can the bunker because the bunker's hopeless, Marty. Look, don't don't candy coat the um, 
the bunker and just how effective they are every week, week in, week out. Like Graham Annesley must wake up on a Monday morning and and give himself ten lashings because he has to you know go and listen to people say, "Mate, you got that one wrong," and he has to agree with them. That try, like I was saying here, watching it and actually giving the try in the first place, but then the bunker confirming it straight away was a disgrace. But in in um, Manley's defence. They, that didn't that didn't win them the game. Well, it's a, it a pivotal moment given that the scores were close, but in the end they ran away with it and they ran over the top of Penrith. So is that a worry for Penrith or not? Well, I think what's a worry for Penrith is is getting back to back games um, and efforts out of the Ivan when he hasn't got his number one pl- uh, playmaker there and, and his son Nathan. You know, so uh, at the moment if you ca- if you're losing, I think Nathan Cleary in that Penrith side, you're going to have good efforts, but you're not going to have them consistently. And in the in the um, game on the weekend, we saw that against Manly. No one would have picked Manly to win that game after last week. Like, well, they now you're were saying terrible. that they're legit, though, OK? So they've beaten the Souths, they've beaten the Roosters, they've beaten Penrith, they've lost to the Eels, they've lost to St George. That is a topsy-turvy team. Well, as an Eels player, I think that's, a big, that's going to be the difference for Manly. I think the way Nathan Brown played on the weekend, where he just is a pinball, he got, a, he got stuck in. And, you know, like I said to you a couple of weeks ago, what Manly looked like they need is a Kevin... Campion type of player that is actually the glue that can pull all this talent together, and I think Nathan Brown is that key. I know he's coming off the bench at the moment because Trebojevic, Jake, who plays front row for New South Wales, is sitting in that thirteen jersey, which is a front row jersey these days. Um, I think Nathan Brown needs to be put in the team. I think they've got to push Jake Trebojevic up to the, the to the front row and put one of their their front rowers back on the bench. Nathan Brown needs to start. And he needs to do what Kevin Campion did for the Warriors or Michael Luck, that type of play, where he's the glue and pulling blokes like Tommy Trebojevic into, into, into order. A bloke is not that order. big, but he's got a heart like no, a lion, hasn't he? I mean, he just... The, 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 the head-ups and the tackles and the, 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 the just the, you say, the pinball that he was playing with his body. The effort. There are three, what, well, three wins. you got the Storm, the Sharks, the Raiders, the Warriors, the Seagulls, the Panthers, all with three wins at the moment. So there's a real logjam after the Dolphins and the Cowboys. Cowboys are the only team actually with four wins. Canberra, and again, you know, you look at them and you look at the games that they lose and they were pretty abject against the Warriors. They didn't really throw much. Does it say more about the Eels side or does it say more about the Canberra side? I asked you this. I said, which is the real Canberra side? And you say the side that listened to Ricky Stewart and fronted up last night. Yeah, it was, you know, Tarpon is a, a, a hell of a player, Joseph Tarpon. You know, like, thank God he's a Kiwi. Um, he just lays a platform for Ricky. When he goes well, they tend to go well. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about that. With the Raiders, the Cowboys and the Warriors... It's a false economy when you're looking at their top eight because you give them their buy and they actually sit in one, two, and three. Yeah? Because the other teams that are in front of them, they've all had a buy already. Yeah. So those three teams in in the um, context of where the competition at the moment are actually travelling really well. And what Ricky's doing at the moment, it, and it's a bit of a battle of the minds at the moment. When you look at, you know, Toddy Payton, when you look at Ricky Stewart, when you look at Andrew Webster – they're continually having to put, talk to their players about the efforts in, in the areas on the football field where they need those efforts and get them up the following week to get their wins. Um, it's again a little bit out, you know, skew with here where you've got the Dolphins sitting there, they've had the bye, you've got the, uh, the, the, the teams that have already been in there, the Storm, the Sharks, they've already, you know, they've already had um, the bye and they've got their, that eight points in front of them. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit... I think we ought to take into context, Marty, where the where the competition is actually being played at the moment, and how these coaches are man- manipulating the the competition to make sure that their teams stay within touch. But if you look from top top to bottom, you know there's three wins in it, and you can go from you know sitting down the bottom, this is sales, to sitting at the top in three games. Latrell Mitchell, I want to talk about this guy, uh, just the most blessed person in terms of natural ability and talent. And we saw him score a cracker of a try against the Broncos a couple of weeks back. But he looks so dispirited and so disinterested at the moment. As a club, are they best to cut him loose right now and say, lad, come back when you feel like playing? Well, you'd, you'd think that that would be an answer, wouldn't it? Cut the best pl- I'll tell you what, they'll line up. There'll be 15 clubs lining up to sign him. Um, and all the rugby union clubs too that were looking for talent. I, look, I don't think they'll cu- I don't think they'll cut him. I think he's south through and through, and he'll play the rest of his career out there. I think who's really under pressure here is Demetrio, the coach. I think this is his final week. I think he's been under pressure. hasn't got a win yet this year. He's been under pressure since round one. He was under pressure when since Sam Burgess called it for what it is, and we've got Wayne Bennett sitting in the in the. Um, Shadows waiting to be given another uh, uh, contract. Oh, I think it gets. I think it gets announced in the next couple of weeks. I think. I think Wayne Bennett replaces Demetrio, and the whole Latrell Mitchell thing goes to bed because Wayne Bennett comes in and sorts it out. 
Well, they've got the Sharks up next, right? I'm just looking down the, the thing here, and then they get a buy after that. So the Sharks up next. You'd, you'd think they'd lose the And then they get the, the Storm Sharks. after that. So it's then a, two out of the next three games are probably games they're going to lose. Well, and that's that their season over, Tony. On that effort. I've got, to t- I've got to tell you, Marty, I was so disappointed watching a bloke with that much talent play the way that he played. I was I was actually feeling sorry for him. You know, it was an embarrassment to watch Latrell Mitchell run around and play that type of football and not even care about what he was doing. You know, the way that he threw his elbow into Sean Johnson, the way that he lifted the leg right, to get those two um, penalties away late and then to cop a three-match suspension really rubbed salt into Demetrio's wounds at the moment. You know, so uh, he probably does need a rest, mate. He probably needs a, a mental um, health holiday because he's not. He's just not there. As far as North Queensland go, they bounce back. They had another win. Are you impressed by them? I mean, it was against the Titans. The Titans going to even win one game this year? Yes, I think the Titans will win a game. I think because nobody goes through and doesn't win a single game. Yeah, do they? look, I think they'll win. A, I think they'll win a few games, and you just got to you got to bear with them if you're a Titans fan. But the Cowboys again, Toddy Payton, he's got them fit. That's the main thing. They they were well out in front. And the Titans got back to with I think it was eight eight or six points. They got back to within them before Felton intercepted that try and put them away. But the Cowboys are doing enough to to say that they're back in in 2024, Marty. They've got a, a, right across the board. They've got a decent side. Um, can they stay up there in the top four? That's the question. I'm, I'm still not seeing them as a top four team at the moment. Let's look at the Roosters. Look, I mean, that comeback aside, when you come back like a big... And the Warriors used to do this a lot. I call them garbage time points. You're down so much. You're down 25-0 at half time. Sure, you lose the game 40-30, to 30 and, and you know the commentators sit there afterwards, oh, we had a great second half. You got dicked in the first half. You've already done. Is they that did, the case with got, the Roosters? They got done like a donut. 24-0 at half time. They're lucky they, they weren't beaten by more. Um, the way that they're running through it will kick out. That, like, that's the kick out we want to see. Down that left edge with Matt Burton and Steve Crichton, you know what I mean? Like, you get those three playing like that on the back of Kikau, where he decides to run and cause all this damage. He and he's doing it to Sydney City. He does it to every team. So that's the the secret for the Bulldogs. It, you, it's more about the conversation with the Bulldogs than it is for the Roosters. The Roosters are sort of they're looking a little bit like manly in these first six rounds. They well, I just don't really know which side is week, the rear. That's the thing. I don't and the which... next week they're pretty average. Well, you could actually add Parramatta to that as well. I mean, well, the competition, Marty, is really interesting. You know, like, I, I I was getting really frustrated on the weekend watching football for a number of reasons. I actually think that the game is getting really soft. So they're talking about no long kickoffs anymore. That's one of the best highlights of a game. Well, is this the is the guy, kickoff. Brown, that you were talking about, people. If you didn't see the highlights in this, watch this guy carry the ball back in the kickoff. He's running at three Mack trucks coming his way, man, and he's fearless, isn't so, he? So, so basically what you're saying, the NRL is saying, is let's remove any collision or any sighting of a collision in the, in, in the viewer's mind that is going to cause someone a headache. You know what I mean? So let's. So what do you want to do with a the, with the kickoff? Tap it? What is, this or is take what, a knee? So what, what, are you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you creating? What, like, what does that game look like? Well, it looks like touch. <laughs> and what are you saying? What are, what are you saying? Like, don't touch the halfback. You can't touch him, so you can't charge down the kick. So don't touch him. You can't tackle him. What does that look like? Touch well, it starts looking like the NFL, doesn't it? Where they protect the quarterback, but but then you then you talk about Daly Cherry Evans. He's you know, he's thirty five. Looks like he's going to beat Cameron Smith's record of four hundred odd games. He'll be 38, 39. Well, we got to mention that guy, don't we? Three hundred and ten games, and he passes Cliff Lyons. And for all of us old buggers, I remember what a great player Cliffy Lyons was. He was around when you were playing, of course. And hey, Cliffy Lyons played in a tough era. Like they charged his, they charged his kicks down. Oh, yeah. He got taken out late. Mm. He had to get up off the ground well, and I, pick I himself up. I thought that's a great change that they made because anyone that charges a guy's knees while he's kicking the ball, I mean, well, that's just a hazard waiting to happen. Yeah. It? Again, I agree. I've got to agree that you you have to take the the grey area out of it. Yeah. But what I don't agree with is turning the game into something that it's not. And for me, the hybrid game. See, everyone's talking about what's the hybrid game between rugby union and rugby league. It's the current game of rugby league. That is the hybrid game that we've got. And the problem that I can see is that the NRL are actually going to turn us all off. Because the more it gets like what I'm beginning to see, I'm starting to look at what's on Netflix and the next movie that's coming on. Because it ain't tough anymore. Finally, Michael Jennings. We started the program by saying that you said, and I agree with you entirely, that the NRL are right. And they came out today, Monday, and they've said that they're not going to officially, officially celebrate his 300th game. Now, normally what they do, of course, is the ABDO goes out, the CEO goes out, they shake his hand, they present him with the match ball and they do all of that. You can no longer in this day and age divorce what that guy has done off the field with what he's done on the field. And I thought it was really lame of the players uh, from the Roosters to come out in support of him yesterday and try and, and push that argument that, oh, you know, he deserves a celebration for 300 games. No, he, look, 
If that's the case, you've got to chuck out the women in league round. You've got to chuck out all this talk about respect. You've got to chuck out all of that. You can't have one and the same, can you, if you're the NRL? You know, this guy has to be considered for being a drug cheat that he never admitted to. Uh, the only time he admitted it was he so he could get his ban reduced from four to three years. And he's been convicted in a civil court of raping his wife at least four times. How can the rest of those players sit there and pretend that none of this exists when you talk about this guy? It's a, it's a, it's a grey area that the NRL continue to visit. You know what I mean? They... they because when you go right back, Marty, and you say, right, well, how how did that happen? They have to sign the contracts to say that you can play rugby league in, that, in their competition. All right? So the NRL have an opportunity right then and there to say, actually, hey, uh, where's the advice around this? What is the best thing for us? Because you're not just talking about, is it, you know, uh, Jennings' 300th game, which every player, you know, they'd love to get to 300 and all that sort of stuff. But from an NRL perspective, what's it, what does this actually mean to us? I'll, I'll tell you one thing, we're talking about it, and we've got listeners listening to it. They probably, you know, if their wives are listening, they're probably thinking, how does that sport deal with something like that and allow that to happen? And, of course, then we've got people saying, well, should he, should he get a handshake and a ball for his 300th? Like, right at the beginning, and this is where sport... So you're saying when the Roosters re-signed him that they should have actually just... The NRL should have stepped in at that stage and said no. Well, they, well, they should have. Like, I can't see any other way that they can get out of this. They should have said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to register this contract. Until there's a there's a, a dead set uh, line that's been drawn in the sand to say that he's not guilty or that he's paid, you know, what he is... Because the argument you've got here is that the wife's come out and said, well, he hasn't given me anything that no, he's... he's he's 500 grand and he's hidden all his money. Yeah. And, and, and now it makes Sydney City look bad. So what are you doing paying this guy when, when he's got this bill that he has to pay and the NRL is sitting there going, hey, here's a ball and thank you very much. Oh, superb! Up the wires. How good is that? Warriors absolutely moosing south on the weekend. Um, shortly you're going to hear from the guy that leads all the charge. You could hear it roaring out of the television. It just sounds fantastic with the Warriors fans away from home. After that win, legitimately... A Xavier Oates Superman try away from being top of the table. The Warriors have conceded, what, well, added up 26 points in the last three games. It's it's eight and a half a game. So if you can play any game of rugby league and you can keep the opposition to under 10 points, you're going to win more games than you lose, aren't you? Ooh. I mean, there was the 8 0 when Melbourne beat Penrith, but most of the time you're going to have to score more than 10 points. After that performance, can you say that every other team in the comp fears the Warriors after that? I think so. I, th I, think, I think that the. Um that fear has not just happened this year. I think what people have wanted to to see, and, I, and I've got to be um, brutally honest and say this myself, is whether or not you've got the same players playing to that same standard that they created last year and, and work as hard as a team to go out there and perform on the football field. And I have to say, you know, generally you watch the first six rounds to get a feeling for that. You've got to say that they are. You know, like Charles, look, they can score every time they get the ball up in the in the opposition. Well, you tree. can against South Sydney. Like, at least not get carried away. South Sydney are absolute shite at the moment. All right, so they're they're not even playing to fifty percent of their ability. They they've got all sorts going on. But the good thing about that is the Warriors just went. Well, you're going to pay. Like the Warriors didn't muck around with them. They said you're going to pay, and it's not thirty four points. It could have been sixty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they 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 actually that's a, that's the best thing that I saw is like we're going to make you pay. I don't feel sorry for you. Let's get the job done, and that's what you want a, a top four team to do. I think what you've got at the moment is you have got s s the players that are still in career-defining form, and it comes out this weekend that Wade Egan should be in the in the in well, the do you agree? Four. I do, I do agree, and I'm an, I'm not a Wade Egan fan. I think that defensively he's frail. I, look, I think I think Billy Slater will be going. Yes, get Wade Egan in there because I'll just send some 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 footballers at him. You're going to have to. To, to protect him at that next step up. Um, but he's in career-defining form. And he is, you know, if you look at... Well, he outplayed the best... Cook on the weekend, didn't he? I mean, well, he totally... And look, that beautiful sleight of hand that he's got, the dummy pass, I mean, I haven't seen any other rake do that. That was brilliant. I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a play like that for a long time. Forget about the sleight of hand, but the way that Nick, um, uh, Nickel Cox that jumped out from the left and went around to the right and, and the way that Wade Egan just fade, faded and put that ball right where it should be for him to run onto it, was 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 genius coaching, yeah, you know, like training they, ground practice. They, man. It was. It just it went. It flowed, and that's what the Warriors have at the moment. Their their their, their rhythm is very very good. Their halfback at thirty five, you know, is at the top of his game. You, you, you're talking about 
I'm not, I'm not just talking about Wade Egan. Like I thought, you know, Barnett has to go close. Yeah, he was playing. He's playing very magnificent. You know what I mean? I bet you they they wish they had the choice of Aiden Fanor Blake. You know, Tui Harris should be in the Kiwi team. You know, you, what what and and then you look at it and you go, what about Roger on the wing? And and say, what the hell is he doing on the wing? But then go, but he is on the wing, and they put him on the wing, and he performs. And this is the difference. The difference is where we used to panic and say, man, we've got players playing out of position and we don't know what's going to go on. Andrew Webster has created an environment where players, no matter where he's going to put them, are going to go out there and perform for his football team. So if Rogers on the wing, he's saying, I'm doing it for the team. Plus there's injuries as well. Don't forget that there's three or four key Warriors players who aren't playing at the moment. So they've got players to come back as well. Here, text that's come in. Martin, this can be on today. I heard he had to go to hospital. Bad indigestion from eating too much <laughs> humble pie regarding Roger going to fullback and chance to centre. Yeah. And, you know, how, what, what, a, what a wonderful position to be in to have two of the, uh, well, I'm going to say two of the top um, fullbacks being, being one and one, uh, one jersey, one on the wing. You know, the, the way that they played... The way that Chance came back and, and actually ran for, I think it was 230 metres, you know, set up a couple of tries, put himself in and around that, that ruck. And then the conversation that he had afterwards about Roger, you know what I mean? Like, Roger's my idol. He's in the same team as me. All of us can't believe that Roger's playing playing alongside us. And that that conversation that's going at the moment, is just, it's just, it's all turning Webster's wheels in the right direction. It is so similar to the team that we had back in, back in 2002. Right down to the red-headed coach, you know what I mean, mm. and the and the and the form Got and the players close, yeah, yeah. all the way all the way there that started to get this belief, and then all of a sudden, two thousand two two thousand three had these wonderful couple of years. The same thing is is with Andrew Webster. He's got them all firing. Um, given an injury to to probably their number one playmaker, Sean Johnson, mate, they looking as good as they were last year. Metcalf, Walker, um, Capewell, Dallin. And also, Nakorde all to come back. A Xavier Oates try, Superman try away from being top of the table. What does it take now to convince yourself, to convince everybody about this team? Do they have to beat one of those three teams, Penrith, Brisbane and Melbourne? Because they couldn't beat any of them last year. They got so close to Melbourne this year. What does it take to win one of those games? And is that what it's going to take for most people to go, wow, this Warriors side could legitimately win this thing? Well, you know, Marty, you look at you look at the first six rounds of the competition, and you start to you start to make your mind up around what the competition looks like. There's eight eight points at the top. There's two points at the bottom. Okay, it's anyone's comp. That's what's happening. You got teams you think are going to just go out and walk over teams on the weekend. You can't pick them. All right, they've been like manly coming out and like turning yeah, Penrith yeah, over. Yeah. So you've got a competition that's very even, which means that you're going to get some smokies that roll into the top eight this year. Okay, so the, if, if the trend keeps going this way, come the Origin side, like, let's talk about the Dolphins that they don't lose any Origin players, or they do lose Origin players. They're either going to go up or go down. Okay, the Warriors don't lose anyone. Well, they may lose. So let's talk about these quick questions then for you. Is Egan going to play Origin this year? Given the form of Cook, well, he you know, you're going to have to say that up here, Curacao probably, the probably number, one hooker. Yeah, yeah. Number one hooker. And whether or not they go with the boy from North Queensland Cowboys, they're sitting top of table if you give them the two points. So he's in the top three. It, the, Does Kebby still think, this is on the text, Artius has to be back at fullback? The 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 oh, question. There's a mind change. The there's a mind change. I just want to. I just want to say to you. There's, there's a man a, who can't choose between a cheeseburger and a fillet of fish, ladies and gentlemen. I, right there. I tell you what. The question was around to our picky playing fullback and Roger playing centre. All right. So all you all you people out there with your tartingers <laughs> that aren't on properly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two are picky, isn't playing, and you got Clockstead back at fullback. The question was, should Roger be playing fullback? Of course, he, you put your best fullback in there at the moment when two, two are picky's there, okay? Now, Chance being back, getting fullback and all that, where does Roger go? You say that Roger played that game and he played well and, and Chance secured that number one jersey. Of course, that's where you keep them, all right? He hasn't got to make that change, but we're not talking apples for apples, Marty. We were talking... Where would you put him? The question should be, okay, people, two up, picky, chance goes down and two up, picky comes back. Where does Roger play? Who replaces Bundy on the bench if Walker is still out? Ooh, well, there's enough. There's some good young kids coming through. I think Laban, you know, there's, there's been talk about him for a number of years, getting his debut on the weekend. I think there's a couple of young blokes um, that are running around down there in second grade that can come up and cover. Um, and you and you just got to... You know, you've got to think what's what's in Webster's mind. If he's going to put RTS on the wing, 
<laughs> he'd come up with another smoky they'll go and sit on the bench finally is Tamari Martin a better number six than Metcalf I think so look I think so at the moment you've got to have experience on. and when, when he selected Tamari Martin over um, Harris Tavita was, was a real surprise to everybody but you've got to remember that Andrew Webster uh, uh, and Tamari Martin have got a relationship that go back to a grand final that they went to when they were in the under 20s and, and was Webster that brought Tamari Martin out of Brisbane to say come back with me so it looks like and you've got to listen to the conversations that go on behind it the scene he's told Chancellor Cox here you're playing fullback everyone's going play Roger play Roger and he's, he's again look at your coach and going I can trust him and then you then you ask why are they playing for him well because he's actually telling him and not deviating from where he's going. You know what I mean? So he's obviously said to Tamari Martin, you're actually sitting in the number two slot. You're in, okay, if there's an injury. Because I'm watching the game going, I've got to tell you, Harris Tavita had a storming game. Why is he not playing? Yeah, good call. We're going to be going across the ditch and talking to Richie Morgan from Warriors Nation shortly, people, and the he's a ledge spot. But it's Monday. Moan, moan, moan. I'm I'm moaning all the time. Oh, it's Monday. I'm going to moan on a ride. Dominic Young and Latrell Mitchell, two of the biggest, and I do mean literally as well as figuratively, flakes to be currently playing in RL. Now, it's not normal that I isolate and have a crack at individual players, but these two deserve everything that they're copping right now. The Roosters wing Young because he's just simply a weak-ass, really bad player. And Mitchell because he simply can't be arsed playing. Now, I'm sure Dominic Young has got a a massive social media following. He's probably an influencer and catwalk king and fashion model. (sighs) Do it. Be it. All good. Go away and be that person, Dom, because, mate, you are not an NRL player's backside. You tackle like I would. Frady Cat. Scared of tackling. Kiko made him look like a kindergarten kid pretending to be a rough, tough rugby league player on the weekend. Can't hold the ball. Can't pass. Can't finish when the try line beckons and a stiff arm to the face of Blake Taff was bozo behaviour at its worst. Deserve the red card, should get a long ban and use it, Dom, to fluff your hair to back up, take a few gym selfies working out and find another skin-tight shirt to wear for your next career, which shouldn't be anything to do with pretending to be an NRL player. As for Latrell Mitchell, well, his coach is 100% right. His actions versus the Warriors were just plain stupid. Stupid. Selfish and stupid. The guy clearly doesn't want to be there. He's lazy, inattentive, can't concentrate, and looks totally disinterested. Do yourself and your teammates a big favour, pal, and just walk away. You are squatting on a salary at the moment. Young should be cut because he's just bloody hopeless, and Latrell needs to leave the game till he can, if ever, be bothered again to actually want to play. Devlin. I'm as proud as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. The Platform. He's a leech. Richie Morgan joins us. He's the guy with the drum of the Warriors Nation. It's so cool to hear all your lot rowdy chanting and uh, just bursting through the television, mate. Oh, mate, it's good to hear because, Marty, that was our that was our round one. We've, we've waited and watched all the games in Auckland and Christchurch and Melbourne. So that was Sydney side as round one, and so we were bursting at the bit, man, just to try to get there. And and the weather, thankfully, turned good for us. And um, I think we had a lot of last minute people ch- who changed their mind who weren't going to go because of the weather, who turned up. It was an awesome crowd, man. How many of you in total? Jeez, I reckon there would have been about probably 400, 300, 400 Warriors fans spread out in that sort of section, in the away section, which is compared to previous years. Um, support, you know, when the team wasn't go, doing so good, probably you, you could say doubled. It was double the usual um, turnout. So, mate, the team's on the up and the fans are fans on the up too. Well, the, the, the great thing is, is when that chant comes up and it's an away game and you're hearing Warriors, Warriors, you're hearing your drum and everything. It just, mate, it just sounds magical coming through the TV. How oh, good, eh? I've watched the games. Uh, I've watched the game three times again just because of <laughs> that, Martin. Uh, I loved it when we... And, and I've heard some feedback about um, at Mount Smart, um, so Go Media Stadium, they had an MC and they were trying to do chants and the, it was, he was on the microphone. I've heard some feedback saying that didn't go down well for the fans there. And I've heard the fans say they hate that Warriors chant. Well, I absolutely love it. And there's a time and place for it. And when your team's up by 20 in Sydney, in a Sydney stadium, I think that's the time you rack it out because I reckon that other team supporters are hating it. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And I think it's absolutely brilliant and in force as as one unity. Everyone did that on on the weekend, and it was man, I actually got I was doing it, 
and I actually had to stop because I got chills. I was going, this is unbelievable. I love it. When, when during a game do you decide to get the drum out and you start banging it and you start doing the Warriors then? Is there any particular time that you think it deserves it now yeah. or does it just happen? Yeah. No, nah, it's, it's, it's a bit of... Can I say an art form? It's not really an art form to bang a drum, right? Uh, to be a, to be a footy supporter, but um, no, I, I I'm strategic with it. I, I I hate overdoing it. I don't want to overdo it at all, and I don't want to annoy fans. Some fans want it more. Some fans want it less. I I pick moments. So obviously, where where we are, where we're positioned on the field, if it's good ball position, and normally I don't go anywhere earlier than tackle two or tackle three. I'm, I'm normally starting around tackle three or four, and in certain moments we're up by 18-4. Sean Johnson just scored a try. I rip into it. There's, there's, that's an emotional scent. But normally, I'm just it's in good ball while on the attack. That's when you want to pump them up. And or if they're in the doldrums, right? If they're they're fighting back into a game and they're on defence, that's when I also like to to start the chant as well. Richie Morgan, Warriors Nation, with us. He's the band with the drum. Is it a lot of familiar faces now, or are you seeing newbies coming through, coming coming and joining you? heaps of newbies but heaps of the old school faces that, that that i've seen from going back to 2010 2011 faces that just they're all popping up coming back for whatever reason being busy they've moved into interstate gone uh, here here for work on the weekend so many people come up and said hello hey richie how's it going man love the drum so many people just were living off it they love it they, the feedback is is intense in terms of they want more they want the more they People across the across the stadium, Richie, start it now. <laughs> I'm like, man, my arm's killing me. <laughs> I need a break. More power to you, mate. Sounds brilliant coming through the telly. More power to you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. I'm so happy that, that it can come through. And um, maybe strategically, I had a, had a word to some of the, um, the operations managers and told them to, to set up some mics. We don't know. Or maybe we're just loud and proud. Awesome, mate. Keep it up. Head to head. <laughs> Six separate uh, sporting and topics, all to do with the rugby league. We get 30 seconds on each, and you've got to argue yes or no, pro or against these. First up, the Warriors have the best fans in Australia in the NRL. No, for a fact. I absolutely know that one for a fact, Marty. You go up to Brisbane, so Brisbane, North, uh, North Queensland, the Titans, um, all home games because there's that many Kiwis up there. You go to the West Sydney, so you've got Parramatta, West Tigers, uh, you got Cronulla you can throw out there too if in, in, oh sorry that's in the city um, West Tigers and Penrith Blacktown's full of Kiwis um, you go to the, the city suburbs like Cronulla St George and Manly it's full of Kiwis in that so no matter where you go you look at the crowds and there's just as many Kiwis as there are Aussies well, I'm not going to really argue against it, but I'd also like to point out, I thought that the manly crowd that turned up at Brookie was magnificent. I thought the week before when the Tigers played at Leichhardt. Thanks, Reggie. And, and yeah, look, you know, it just says so much to me about they've got to keep these small boutique grounds. The only disappointment I had with well, the Warriors and the Souths on the weekend was the fact that it was played in such a huge stadium. You need fifteen to 20,000 inside. Just create the noise, create the arena. Get, make, it, make it a ticket that's worth getting. You know, I mean, anything, any time there's a waiting list, people want to get on the waiting list, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it's all sold out, I think, every every game in New Zealand at the moment, it's like that. I'm going to be a sellout this weekend as well, Manly versus. All right, James Tedesco needs to be stood down for his own sake, yes or no? Well, you look at um, Cordner, the old captain for Sydney City, and he ended up ending his career. And I think what we're seeing with uh, Tedesco is whether or not that his career is actually going to go uh, as long as what he hopes it to do, especially with a sickening uh, knockout with kick out on the weekend. So I think he'll be stood down. I think the game is moving towards that now where we've got to have a game of hold, not a game of tackle. You know, we're going to hold players oh, up. stop it, mate. We're not going to, we're not going oh, to allow to go in there with your body and put your body on the line and try and stop big Fijians because it's too hard. So, uh, yeah, I'll think that, I'll think they'll retire him. Look, I mean, look, I think he has to be stood down simply because when you've had 10 concussions in his career, seven in the last three What's years... What's your name? See, this is Tony, and these are the ones they tell Where us about. I? This is the ones they tell us about, right? I mean, he could have had a hundred concussions. He would have had a hundred concussions. How many games has he had? Over two hundred. Yeah, he's. He, I guarantee he's had hundred. He said it's not going to prohibit the rest of his career. James, get your listen to your family, mate. This is not good. He was out as soon as he hit the hip before he hit the ground. And every time you get a concussion, the next one is easier to make you concussed. If you know what I mean. I just, I was felt sick when I saw him, and I just thought, how on earth can you keep putting yourself in this danger? The Warriors should go to Vegas, yes or no? Yes, I think so. I think everyone in New Zealand wants to go to the Warriors too. It's all about taking big crowds to uh, get 
I guess, seats filled over there in, in America? Because they're not going to fill them with American um, bums, are they? they? They need people who actually know rugby league and want to go and support them. So the Kiwis should have an opportunity to go over there and uh, give their fans an opportunity to go to Vegas for, a, you know, one, or, one of a better word, um, a, a decent holiday down there in the, in the, su- in the sunny side of... city. Yeah, on the sunny side of the desert. Look, so. I took a whole lot of people there. We went and watched uh, David How come you didn't there. invite me? Look, the thing is, I've, 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 I put this out on social media on the weekend, and a lot of Warriors fans jumped on, and they said, hell no, it's too much of a distraction. You don't want to be there, because we've seen the teams that go there a little bit slow by the How time. How do you think the Gold Coast Titans feel every week? Well, like losers, Tony. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Here's your answer. You know, I mean, so I just think, I think, is it is it is it better for the Warriors to jump on that and give people an away trip, or is it better for them to just knuckle down, stay at home, and actually just keep their focus on rather than going over there? Because it is easy to... Is that what buggered up South Sydney, is it, in the first round, going to Las Vegas? It's an argument. You can probably add it to every other argument, can't you? After what we saw with Manly and Penrith, the bunker should be abolished, yes or no? 100%, mate. I'll tell you what. The bunker is the biggest waste of money that the NRL... Uh, have committed to. They should not allow people to go up there and make those blinding, terrible decisions like they did on the weekend when Cole scored that try after dropping the ball, knocking it on, picking it up and, and running 80 minutes because everyone else went to go and pack the scrum and the referee and the bunker were the only two blokes that didn't see it happen. Like, seriously, if you were running KPIs on that and the cost of it was a million dollars, you'd be pretty disappointed you bought a dud. I think that you should got to say, drag yourself kicking and screaming out of the troglodyte area, Matt. The whole thing about the technology now is it's is there to aid the referees. And like humans, we always get things wrong and occasionally get things wrong. Everyone bitches about the TMO. Everyone bitches about the VAR. As soon as you take it out, what's going to happen? Everyone at the games can be looking at the big screen and screaming at the referee. Take the big screen out too. So that's what, again, so you take... Never had one of those at Carlow Park? How well, many times do you reckon they dropped the ball in that corner up there, up there on the right when he used to rise up the hill? <laughs> I tell you what, when they get a meat pie from the crowd, it's on the hot meat pie on the hand, they could drop a few as well. No, they can't abolish the bunker now. It's just they've invested way too much money and way too much ego in it. Wade Egan will play Origin this year, yes or no? Ooh, look, I'm... I'm Still not convinced that he's got the number. He's got t- the top two roles there at the moment. I think. If, I think if you go another month without losing, I think he's he's probably in the top two. So it's it's not out of the question. It's not just Wade Egan. It's like for the first time in a long time, we've got enough players. So you got Cape Will, you got um, uh, Barnett, you've got Egan, you got Walker. You know, you got all these blokes that can play. Do the Warriors actually get a few players in? Well, as a New South Wales fan and never have been a Queensland fan, I'd like to try something different. I think that uh, what he offers in attack especially is the variation. And Origin is about margins, isn't it? And you get so few chances during a game. I'm not sure he starts, but I'd certainly like him to play some role because I haven't seen a guy in that position with so much possession of the ball in any team so far, in any game that I've watched, that does more than him at those moments. Yeah, so he's I, a good player. He's, a, he's so clever. and He's playing well. That sleight of hand, that he, he just seems to be able to spot that the minutiae of gaps, doesn't he? He just he, he comes alive at the exact moment that you saw it against Canberra and he did it again on the week and he's a game-breaker. Hopefully we can play this when it's named. Oh, well, as a New South Wales fan, I want anything. I'm quite happy to get anything. All right. Melbourne right now are the best team in the comp, yes or no? No, they're not. They're not the best they're not the best well, team who's in the competition. Better than them? Well, I think there's a number of teams that are still better than them. It's just that we're five rounds into the competition, Marty, and you like everyone else is walking around with with something else that you shouldn't have this earlier on the season because no one's going to care about the first five rounds of the season. They're going to care about the last five rounds of the year. And I think Melbourne, although they will be there, uh, there's going to be a lot of water going under the bridge in the teams like Brisbane, Penrith, the Warriors. Oh, I'm going to throw North, North Queens and the Cowboys and even Ricky's Canberra, if they can hold on, may have different, uh, a you different game You just won the argument for me, as a matter of fact, because the teams that they have beaten this year are, in fact, Penrith, Brisbane and the Warriors. And so any team that beats those three teams is normally probably going to finish at the top of the table, aren't they? Well, yeah, they've, they've got to beat them twice, and then they've got to beat them twice again to get and to the And they've done that with injuries as well. They've done it without Munster for most of those games. How have they gone in the last final series? Oh, for God. I mean, how have they gone in the last 10 years, mate? I know, but how many do they have to give back? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. All right, yeah. <laughs> Not that they're very happy about that. Ah, uh, finally, do we do one more? Do you think Greg Inglis is actually a fisherman? Well, what's he doing these days? I don't think he's fishing. The Influx Cleanup Award. <laughs> 
Every week, TK picks, he decides who is going to get this. And this is essentially for a team or a player that does whatever it is on the field to turn the rubbish into the recyclable. Let's put it that way, shall we? Well, I'm going to have a I'm going to have a different um, take on it this week, Marty. And, and this is a team. I'm going to give it to the NRL Commission because they're turning a good thing, and they're actually recycling it and turning it into something else that needs to be cleaned out by our Flux pro- product. And that's the game of rugby league. When you've got 35 year olds that are going to be 45 when they retire, when you're not allowed to kick the ball off and get held up when you get tackled from it. When you can't charge a kick down when the game's on the line, we might as well start going out and calling this game of the rugby league a game of touch. And where do the NRL commission stop? Like, when are they going to actually stop and just let the game be the game of rugby league? Because in my mind, what they're doing is they're turning the purest away from the game. And they've got an opportunity at the moment to really stamp the authority on a game of rugby union that's struggling by keeping it the way that it is. But at Every corner that we're looking at, they want to make a change to make it soft. And they've got an overlap here. TK's top five. Oh, first try. We wrap it all up here with the top five teams of the week. Now, the way that they are on the table at the moment, Dolphins, Cowboys, Storm, Sharks, Raiders in that order. Number five. Well, the Dolphins, they're sitting top of the table. And I, get, I tell you what, the best thing for the Dolphins when they're sitting top of the table this early on in the season, you know they're not going to end up with a wooden spoon. So they get my fifth position. And, uh, yeah. They, they look, did this last year. They got off to a rocket, mate. They couldn't hang on. Are they going to make the eight or not? Mm, I'm going to say no. The teams that they've beaten, St. George, Titans and West Tigers, those are their three wins. They do they remind me of a lot of Newcastle in 88, 89. Yeah. Number four. I'm going to go here and I'm going to give it to the Storm. Okay, he's putting the Warriors at one again. I can feel it, Lachlan. You're giving it to the Storm. The Storm are the best team. I've just outlined why they are. No, I'm going to give it to the Storm. I think I think the Storm have got plenty of... They've still got plenty to do to, to cement the top four, but I think that that's, this position for the Storm, they'd be real happy finishing the end of the year in fourth. Um, at the moment, I think they're just scraping through. Three... Well, there's only three teams to really look at here, and I'm going to give the th- the third spot to the Raiders. I'm going to think. I'm going to, I'm going to look. Ricky is really interesting and as a character, and he just knows how to push buttons. And the, what I saw on the w- weekend, especially Xavier Savage, you see that kid play. Mm. Not just not just the speed, but the way that he was like beating blokes and Tomoko. I actually think the best football's still in front of them. So. The Raiders, they get that third spot. Well, but what Raiders side, though, as I said right earlier, right at the start of thing to suggest, is it the side that, that played so averagely against the Warriors or is it the side that turned up at home? Do you remember they were at home against the Parramatta Eels and put 40 on them? Which is the Raiders, which is the Raiders side? Which is the one that... The one that finished in the four. Number two. Well, number two goes to the Warriors. I like to look at a, I like to look at the game for six weeks before I decide whether or not I'm seriously going to um, challenge who the top four is. And at the moment, the Warriors sit in number two position because on the current ladder, you give them their boy, um, Marty, yeah, and they actually sit in the confused. top three. I, must admit, I just wish that. Why do you need two points for a bye? Why well, can't they, they, they don't just get two points. They get six points. So you got to say, that's what I say, like the Dolphins here winning this, this many games, they get another four points. They sit on 12, probably... 16 or 18 is way out of the wooden spoon um, territory. So they're halfway there already and we're only five, five rounds of the competition. The beauty about the Warriors sitting second here, going into um, the second half a dozen games, is that they could probably cement the top four in the first half of the season, which they haven't done for a long time. Finally then. Number one. We've got to give it to the Cowboys. Seriously. They sit in the, they sit in the same boat as the Warriors. Yeah, they've pl- they've played all their games. They've they've lost games. They've got there. They've got no buys, and they're sitting second behind the Dolphins. And I and I've got to tell you, if you ask me if they're going to make the the four or the eight, I think they can make either. And I think Todd Payton's doing a good job up there with the Cowboys at the moment. They definitely got the players. Okay, so what was the Brisbane result then? Was that a blip? Was it? Well, well they can, but if you look look at the competition, there's a lot to them. There's a lot of chink in the armor of every team there. You know, you come in after round two, you look at the Eagles, you think, man, the Eagles are back. And then they lose the next two. You know, you go to the Broncos, you think, oh, man, they're back. Then they lose Reese Walsh, lose Reynolds. Got to remember the Broncos lost Reynolds at halftime. Mm. You know what I mean? So you, with the with the teams that are at the top, there's, 
there's a critical part there that people, a lot of people don't really understand is it's the injury to key players. Well, what do you make of the Roosters then? We haven't hardly talked about them the whole show. What do you make of them? I was really... I mean, to me, they're the Canberra, whole they're the Eels. They're all of the same team. They're out, manly, aren't they? They're out of team. the whole weekend, they were the most disappointing. Like, Brendan Smith, for me, at, at um, the middle of the park was really disappointing. Just the way that he... Like, he was... He was trying, but it's not the Brendan Smith that you see in a black jersey. It's not the Brendan Smith you see at Melbourne. I think they, I think they've still got some issues, but you know they still came back within four with eleven players, so there's still some effort there. But I think across the board, Marty, you've got teams with a lot of chinks in the armors that they're still sorting out. And next week we've got a real special guest is going to be able to talk to us because after six weeks he has a fair idea who they are as well. The man just set up the try. That was the Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited. Solving environmental issues using green technologies. Visit microbio.co.nz. It's there!